Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we often see a lot of high-end smartphone reviews on YouTube, but what about the lowest of the low end? Well, that's what I've got here today. This is the TrackPhone Blue View 2. It sells for $30, and what's really cool about this phone is that although it's likely subsidized by TrackPhone, you don't have to activate it to use it. So I've been using it as an unactivated smartphone here, and I've been able to install a whole bunch of stuff on it, and it's actually quite functional if you keep your expectations in check. And what we're gonna do in this video is take a look and see what this phone can do for the price point that we paid for it. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the phone with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this very inexpensive smartphone is all about. Now, this phone isn't all that new. It came out in 2020 or so, but again, it is one of the least expensive phones you can purchase. And I was surprised how good it feels and looks. So what you've got inside is a MediaTek MT6761 Helio A22 processor. Uh, what this means in English is that it's not very fast. In fact, when you first get it out of the box, it's gonna be going through some updates. So it's going to feel really sluggish. It will get a little better over time and I'll show you some performance on it in a minute. Uh, but just be advised, this is not going to be as quick as that $1,200 iPhone might be. It has two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage, but it also supports SD cards. And check this out. If you flip the phone over here and just get your fingernail on the side of the case, you can pull the back off of it because this is where that SD card goes if you want to expand its storage. And check it out, the battery on this is replaceable. This is something we don't see on smartphones any longer. So you can actually walk around with a couple different batteries if you wanted to. The battery life on this is exceptionally good. You can easily get through a day. It'll probably stay on standby for the better part of a week. It all depends though on what you're doing with the phone. So if you're stressing it a lot, uh, playing games or whatever, that will eat into the battery life more significantly. But I think the target market for this phone are very casual phone users, and I think they will be very satisfied with the battery life. And of course, if something goes wrong with that battery, you can just swap it out later. So lots of good stuff there. The display is a five and a half inch IPS display running at 720 by 1440. And because it's such a small screen here, you're getting about 293 pixels per inch. So the screen actually looks really good for a low cost phone here. And as you can see, this is a track phone device, which means it is locked to track phones network. So they will say to you in the box here that you will be violating the terms of service if you try to load some other ROM on it to get around the lock. They also say you're not supposed to resell the phone either, but I don't think they can restrict that legally. But uh, if you are looking to purchase this phone, it will be locked to track phone if you are not so great at hacking away at these Android devices. Speaking of Android, it is running Android 11. After all the updates were done, it was brought up to the January 2023 security update. And at the time I'm shooting this video, we're in early March. So it looks like they're keeping it relatively up to date as well. Now, as I mentioned, this is locked to the track phone network, which is owned by Verizon Wireless. You cannot use it with another carrier. Additionally, the Wi-Fi on this does not handle five gigahertz networks. It is 2.4 gigahertz only. So it's going to be a lot slower than some of the other phones out there when it comes to its wireless connections, but it works. And that's about all you can really expect out of a phone at this price. Now the camera on the back is not spectacular. They say it is a 13 megapixel sensor, but as you can see here, the images don't look so great out of it. I have a very hard time getting focused. There's not a lot of detail to the images, but it does take an image, which I guess is good here. Uh, the video quality isn't that great either. It will shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second out the back. This is a shot I took of my dog a little bit earlier. Not great, but it does shoot video and the frame rate is relatively stable on it. So if you had something to shoot while you're out in the field, it'll do that. Unfortunately, the stabilizer, as you can see here, is not great at all. In fact, it doesn't have a stabilizer. So when you're walking around with it, you're going to see a lot of bumps along the way. So this is definitely not a phone you will buy for its camera, but it does have a camera and it can take images when you need it. 
The front camera here is an 8 megapixel camera suitable for, I guess, a video conference or something like that. So the visual quality here isn't great, but it's passable, and that's about all you can expect out of something, again, at this price point. The performance, though, isn't bad, especially for the casual types of things you do with a smartphone. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. So when you first boot the phone up, you'll have a lot of apps here presented to you. There's a bunch of games that it installs out of the gate things that you may or may not want, but they're gonna be on there, partly because I'm sure there's some subsidies going on there too. There is a full suite of Google applications, so you can get into your Gmail, for example, and pull up your email and do all the things you would typically do on a smartphone here. The screen looks good, the performance is passable. I can't find much to complain about here, actually, as I'm browsing around on it. All right, let's take a look at some web browsing here with the Google Chrome browser. We'll head over to the nasa.gov homepage. As you can see, it's not very quick at rendering pages. That's partly due to its processor, but also due to the fact that this doesn't support the faster Wi-Fi standards that work on the five gigahertz frequencies. But once the pages load up here, things are pretty fluid. The touch display works quite well. The screen is very crisp and clear. It's very easy to read on this display. So I've got no complaints here. Let's jump over to YouTube real quick and see how that works. So we'll load it up here from scratch and you can see how long it takes to load in. And all in, it's pretty quick to get a video pulled up and running here. And I can uh, get my display oriented here and you can see how that works. And the display surprisingly looks nice. The color is good on it. It doesn't look all that washed out. That was something that really surprised me about this phone was how good the display looks for its price point. And I think if you're doing some casual stuff on this phone, like web browsing, email, and YouTube watching, it's going to do all of those things quite well. But what you won't be impressed by is the sound of its speaker here on the back. It is loud enough to hear a conversation, but it's very tinny. It reminds me a lot of this transistor radio that my parents got for me when I was a little kid. One thing though that you can do is plug headphones into it, because unlike those modern smartphones, this one has an actual headphone jack at the top, and of course it supports Bluetooth. At the bottom it has a USB Type-C port for charging. This will also support some peripheral devices, so I was able to get a mouse plugged into it and I could navigate the interface with that, although I was not able to get a USB memory stick to work on this. So I would limit your expectations to maybe a game controller or a keyboard or something like that into the port here. But again, this is also how you charge the phone. Now you can also play some games on this phone, but it might be hit or miss. So for example, I loaded in Roblox here with the world my kids like to visit a lot, which is Cookie Swirl Seas World. And as you can see, it's really slow. So if you're using some of those obstacle courses in Roblox, they call them obbies, it's gonna be probably hard to work with precision here just because it is struggling a bit to keep everything uh, rendered here. So this game probably is not one I would recommend on this and I would probably extend this recommendation to some of the other demanding games out there like Call of Duty Mobile and a few others. But a lot of casual games do work well on here. Uh, this one is called Horizon Chase and this game actually performs quite well and this is the type of game I think that you will have a good time with on this particular phone. So a lot of those free-to-play apps that you find out there, uh, the ones that don't push the hardware all that hard, a lot of the puzzle games, all those should work quite well here like this game is. But again, some of the more demanding ones like Roblox and Call of Duty Mobile and others are something I would recommend you get a slightly more powerful phone for. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot Gaming Benchmark Test, we got a score of 536. It's a very low score, especially when you look at some of the other phones we have on the chart here that have been out for a number of years now. But all that said, this phone, for its price, is pretty impressive given the fact that it is good enough to run a majority of the Android app library with a decent level of performance. You're not gonna play high-end games on it, but you're gonna play casual games on it quite well. You'll be able to get all of your email and other apps loaded up on here and functional uh, without a huge investment. In fact, there are phone cases out there that cost more than this phone does. And the fact that you don't have to activate service to get those apps installed is pretty cool. Again, this is locked to track phones, so you have to use their service with it, but this is a month-to-month -month service without a contract requirement, 
and it works over the existing networks that Verizon and a few of the other carriers here in the U.S. are utilizing. So all in, not a bad deal here if you're looking for something inexpensive for a family member or maybe a kid in the household. If you lose it, you can just get another one uh, without breaking the bank here. And if you're wondering what the state of the super low end is here in the smartphone market, hopefully this video helped answer that question for you. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Om De Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.